I read a lot of nature books. Um, you know, I wrote, read a book not long ago, Consider the Eel, which is about eels. I read a book about pigeons. And I read a, a hell of a lot of nature books. Because um, I grew up in the country, I'm obsessed with nature and um, wildlife and stuff. And my Google alerts are for two things. Rare animals and previously thought extinct. Those are my, because I, I love <laughs> cryptos. I'm a big fan of cryptozoology. I love it when they find something that they thought was extinct and it's not, you know. So that's, that's, that's a lot of my reading. Wow, wow. Take us into your songwriting writing process, Graham. I mean, it sounds like the, the writing, you know, this whole idea of the, uh, the television show concept really freed you. You said the songs came out really, really quickly. Uh, generally, what, over the period of, you know, over three decades of writing, what's it like for you to write an album? How, long, how quickly do songs typically come? How do you go about it? Well, it, again, it's one of those things that I try to put off, but I, I can't because I'm getting some, something's coming through and driving me. So I'll pick up the guitar and half-heartedly come up with something. It's the same process. I usually have an acoustic guitar, and I just kind of bash around the chords. You know, I may have a phrase in my head. Mm -hmm. That's it. Sometimes I write it down. Usually the phrase turns out to be junk, but it will lead me to the guitar, which turns out into something else. So it evolves like that. And again, I might get somewhere, I've got a chord and a, a melody, and I think that's good, and then I'll say, oh, I don't want to do this, you know, and then I'll, I'll just put it off for a month, you know, and go back to it, and it just keeps driving me back. Hmm. And also, you know, this album has been out since March, so I'm so over it, you know, yeah. already, and I've, even actually, to tell the truth, when I was, when I'd finished that album, I was starting to work on something else. You know, uh, and I, I, a few things were coming, and now I'm sort of in, a little bit in that tunnel. I'm right. writing a few yeah. songs, um, but you know, I, I, it's hard because I don't know. I, I never know which direction to take it. You know, I, I'll write something that's a, 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 a strong angst kind of driven song, and then I'll write a really beautiful love ballad, or I'll, I'll have half of each, and I think, oh no, how am I going to put these two together? And it'll stop me from wanting to finish them, it puts me off finishing. I want it all to happen by magic, and it doesn't happen, by sweat, yeah. you, know, um, the, the, you know. But there is the magical element of when you force yourself and you're doing it, and these breakthroughs happen, and lyrical breakthroughs, and then it's like there's a page of lyrics, and you have no idea how they got there. There is a moment of like missing time, as it were, as if you're abducted by aliens or something, mm -hmm. and the song is there. But it takes this in, in, in long, agonizing process of actually, you know, failing a bit and then walking away and leaving it and being put off the idea, you know. So it's it's not it's not something that's that easy. And I'm always thinking, I can't wait until I'm done. I'm I'm not doing this anymore. But that's really not how it works if you're a writer. I guess. You know, um, so I'm, I, you know, when I do write them, I think, well, I'm really a lucky guy because uh, this is this is a lucky thing. Don't keep being miserable about it, you know. But as there's a lot of writers, I, I read, you know, people, you know, writers sometimes they have the same kind of angst. I think of, um, with this kind of thing, I don't, I don't think it's an easy process for many people. If it is, uh, probably the work isn't that good. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's lightweight or something, you know. <laughs> so you know, it, yeah. you know, it's. Um, that, but the process is the same. It's just a guitar and, and uh, you know, now I tend to run in front of the computer with the guitar and type it in because I can't be bothered to write it down and then go to the computer and type it. So now I go straight to the computer. I'm sitting there in a chair with arms holding the guitar. Like the it's all very uncomfortable. You know, I just haven't improved on it, you know. Uh, but there you go. That's the way, that's the way it goes. Let me take it. A few questions from, from the folks here. Anyone have a question for Graham Parker? Yeah. Yeah, I came across on the web recently um, a movie possibly being developed with uh, Don't Ask Me a no Question. Oh, yes. Um, about that? There is, in fact, a guy um, about 10 years ago now. He won't admit to that, but it's true. About 10 years ago, this guy, Michael Grimalia, approached me somewhere and said, I'm doing um, a documentary on the Ramones, and I'm a huge fan of yours. I want to do one of you. And I was like, no. No, not, I, I just, there's nothing going on here, you know. Just, uh, people like watching paint dry. I'm just, the Ramones are, you know, there was, some, there was like a Greek tragedy there, you know. There was, there's really something probably there more than me to write about. I really don't want to, to make a film about it. I don't want to do it. But he kept badgering me, and then I came up with Carp Fishing on Valium, the book, and I took it on the road. I did a, 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 sh a series of shows in clubs where I would read from the stories and then do a song that I'd written. I had specifically wrote songs to go with those stories. Um, 
and um, which came out on my website later, the songs for the, for the um, so I called him up and said, you know what, I've got something here, maybe you can do a film about this. And he said, great, basically for him it was an in, you know, and he wasn't really going to do it about the book, he just wanted to start filming me. And so it went on from there, so that was in like, you know, whatever year that came out, so after 2000 or something, it was back then I think. And so that's when he started doing this thing. And he's been collecting film, doing interviews with me over the years, and getting film clips from the BBC, from David Letterman, from all over. Uh, and um, so suddenly, it's like a reality. And that's why he put it on this site called kickstarter.com, because he had to make $47,000 to pay for the clips. These things cost a lot of money, the licensing fees. You know, so he's had to, and, he, and um, fans sent in the money just like that, boom, it was done, $50,000. So I'm like dreading it, you know, like, <laughs> I, was, I was like, I can't believe my fans did that, the bastards, you know, why did they you know, it's this, it's, There's a mixture of this humbling, humbled feeling that people would do that for me. On the other hand, oh no, because I'm dreading this, man, you know. Anyway, it's, it's, we're, there's going to be a screening in New York for some of the people who paid like a thousand dollars or whatever, and that's happening, and um, apparently it's coming out also simultaneously, and probably will come out first, is a film of me and my sometimes backing band, The Figs, from our tour. Yes, The Figs, that we toured in April and, and, and May, supporting this album, and uh, uh, my, my uh, publishing company, Primary Wave, they paid for a uh, a pro crew to come out, a camera shoot to film us in Fairfield, Connecticut. So that's coming out as well. So it's got champagne for everybody, darlings. You know, I'm going to be drinking champagne in the morning soon and swishing around on red carpets and stuff. You know, it's all going to be going on for me. It's going to be a life of film. So you know, this DVD of the show with a, with an interview on it and a live album with it as well of this show and a documentary. Go away. You know, so, uh, you know, let's get it done before I, you know, I can die at any you know, that age, you know, quickly, you know, get it, get it done now as well, you know, anything, there's a lot of, lot of guys my age, like, he's there, he's, oh, he's gone, Jesus, better get it going, you know. It's good news. Another question? Yeah. Um, Mr. Parker, when you started singing, did you have previous vocal exposure before you went into the band? Vocal? Um, like, at what age did you start? Oh, when did I start singing? Yeah, well, I, I, I used to, you know, as a kid I did have little bands, we never got anywhere. Uh, we never played, you know, uh, ever became anything, but we would play, you know, Friends, and we would have the Beatle haircuts and stuff. I had my first band when I was 13, and we played to a few of the local kids and charged them thruppence. So, you know, but I, I, before I started with the, the, the rumor, the professional gig, as it were, I'd, I'd really done nothing. I'd, um, the guy who introduced me to my manager was playing a gig in, in a cafe in Finsbury Park in London and he said, you should go and play there every Wednesday night, they, they want someone like you. So I would go and play and play cover versions and I'd play some of my songs, I'd play a Beatles song or whatever, and, uh, different songs. And so I was learning, but there was no monitor system, there was no PA system. I didn't understand how any of that stuff worked until I went on stage with the rumor, so I was very green. And basically I would go out with the rumor and lose my voice almost all the time because I didn't know how to sing. And it's taken me years, in fact, until I didn't really learn to sing, in my view, until 1989 when I went out and did a professional solo tour. I said, I'm going out solo. I did the Mona Lisa Sister, which was a stripped down record in 1988. And then I went on a solo tour and that produced a live solo album, a live alone in America. And that was when I started to learn to sing, to learn to use a microphone and not go <sighs> and bite it and break my teeth. Because when I started, I had this incredible anger and intensity, which I don't know why or where it came from. I just did. And that was my performance was screaming. I'd go on stage and just like, <sighs> it was so intense. And uh, I, you know, so I didn't really have any real vocal chops, as we say in the music business. I didn't know. I had to, I had to find out the hard way and the long way. I had before the rumor. I hadn't paid my dues. That was my problem.